Well, greetings all and welcome. We're going to talk about Quartzide one more time in this video. I just posted a video a couple days ago and I tried to kind of in a non-biased way focus on a lot of what uh, I've heard from people as the negatives about visiting and staying in Quartzite for the winter months. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the video description here and try to put a tag up at the end of the video. Um, but again, I just tried to, you know, use a lot of the feedback that I've gotten in the comment sections. Uh, from videos I've done on Quartzsite over the years as well as I browsed quite a few other folks videos that they posted about the area and went through those comments and just kind of collectively um, picked out what a lot of folks have stated are the negatives and why they don't like Quartzsite, why they'll never go back. And of course a lot of the most negative stuff is from people that have never been there. And uh, yeah, it's just interesting. Quartzsite seems to have this kind of controversial aspect about it. People have very strong opinions on either side. So I tried to in that last video not be um, too strong. Uh, I did get some feedback that people thought I were being negative, but I got a ton of feedpa feedback that people thought I were being pretty neutral and non-biased about it. So I was glad to be able to present that information that way. And I didn't want to combine the positives and the negatives in one video um, as to um, just kind of stay focused on that aspect of it. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the positives that I've experienced, why I love Quartzsite so much, as well as the folks that I know and talk to, as well as browsing the comment sections of why people uh, like it and keep going back. And uh, just, you know, Quartzsite itself, it's a special place. It's, it has a lot of unique things about it. Um, and I think that's the big draw. It is just so easy um, to camp, to dry camp in Quartzsite. Uh, you have everything you need there right in town. All of the free camping areas are relatively close to town, so it's not a far drive. You can really save a lot of money uh, by staying put for a little bit, and that is uh, largely the demographic there. Nomads, travelers, and snowbirds that just don't want to be traveling for the winter. They just want to park it, settle down, stop burning gas, save up some money, experience some community, experience a sense of kind of camaraderie, and uh, that's generally what's going on with the folks that enjoy being there. Now for the outsider, when they see these images, the overhead shots of all these people camped out in the middle of this kind of barren desert, um, sitting in the dirt, doing nothing, uh, I can see why you would think that and kind of feel that because you're just getting the surface view. That's all you're seeing. You're just seeing an image. Uh, the magic of Quartzsite is actually being there and the experience itself. And that's been my experience from the very first time I, I camped there, oh, 10 years ago now. I did go to the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. That would have been, I think I did 2014 was the very first. And then 2015 was the one where I really kind of loosened up a little bit and was able to meet people and talk to people and uh, make friends and connect. And uh, that, since then, it's just been a very special place to me. Uh, when I go into Quartzsite after being traveling other places in the country all summer and come the winter months, end up down in the southwest and pull into Quartzsite, it's like, it's like home to me. It does feel like home. I'm familiar with the town enough and all the camping areas. I see people that I know from previous years and it's just, that's a big special part of it, that, that familiarity and convenience. And um, yeah, of course, like I covered in the last video, there's some negatives, but the positives for me outweigh everything. There's such a special vibe going on there that um, I just haven't experienced anywhere else. And one of the first things, my first visit there was experience this sense of camaraderie. It was um, experienced out camped boondocking as well as in town when I was resupplying. Uh, just looking around and seeing all the different people set up and just camping out, dry camping in the middle of nowhere seemingly and enjoying themselves, kind of having a routine, and um, it was just really, I felt like I was a part of something bigger, and it felt good, it really did. And in town, like, everyone was just so nice and friendly, and yeah, it could be busy at certain times of the year, especially in January, but everyone would just keep having a smile on their face and willing to talk and share. Um, there's always this kind of aspect of people's willingness to help you. Um, I have a story from one of my first visits where someone I was camped near got a flat tire and they had a spare so they were starting to jack it up and 
As soon as they got that jack out, starting jacking up that van, old timers from their campers were coming in from off in the distance, putting on their gloves. What do we got going on? You okay? How can we help? What are we going to do to get you back rolling again? Like that to me is so special. And especially in this day and age, um, just that sense of uh, the, the willingness to, to help your fellow man, to help your fellow person uh, is, is very, very special. And that was one of the things I was really attracted to right off. And, um, you know, the conditions are really nothing special. Uh, for me, what makes it special is the people and the experience. Um, and you don't even really have to be an outgoing person. I'm pretty introverted and keep to myself most of the time. But I'll tell you what, when I'm in town and I'm at the laundromat, for example, and it's kind of busy and there's people, you know, everywhere scrambling to get their laundry done, I kind of have like this smirk on my face because I know everybody there is in town from their camp, camping, you know, doing the same thing I'm doing. And everyone else seems to kind of have that subtle smile on their face too. Yeah, you're taking care of chores and you're in this busy laundromat, but there's something kind of fun about it. I know it sounds weird, but there is something very just... It just feels good. It feels good to be amongst your people. It feels good to be um, in a place where you, you feel like what you're doing is accepted and approved by, approved upon. Um, not that I'm the type of person that needs outside approval of what I'm doing. You know, ironically enough, I do get a lot of feedback on my lifestyle posting videos, but that's not why I do it. I've done this all along to share that there is just another way to live. Um, when I was living, you know, my traditional lifestyle uh, before I got on the road, um, there were times in my life where I just felt like kind of hopeless. Like I didn't hate life, but it was like, this kind of isn't like what I really want to be doing. I feel like time's passing by and like this whole opportunity to like be a human on planet earth, like it's a little too precious just to be working all the time. So when I made that decision to really change things up, um, you know, at that time I really felt like I was alone uh, in those feelings. And once I got out on the road and, you know, went to somewhere like Quartzsite and met so many people that, you know, could relate to that, I'd share that story. And they're like, yeah, I totally get it. I'm totally with you. I had a very similar type of thing. Come from a completely different walk of life, but it's still experiencing that same thing where like, you know, this, this life is just so short and precious. Like, what are we really doing, you know? And then, you know, there's the flip side of that where people that haven't experienced what I'm talking about are kind of viewing in from the outside and because they don't get it and haven't experienced that, it seems like, well, you know, it's kind of like that whole living in a van down by the river skit on Saturday Night Live where you kind of knock and, well, you, you know, here you are just sitting out in a dirt pit and out in the desert, you know, with a bunch of people. Um, you know, is that really what you want to do with your life? And... If you put it that way, yeah, it can sound kind of negative, but if you really look at what we're doing, connecting with people, sharing knowledge with others, receiving knowledge from others, helping your fellow person out, connecting with your fellow person, having a laugh with your fellow person, yeah, that's what I want to be doing with my life. And I want to be doing as much of that as possible with my life. So, um, again, I think that's why it's so hard for outsiders to kind of get what's going on with all these people going to court site. Um, so I just want to read real quick. Uh, the last video I did on court site kind of um, not really focusing on anything negative about it. Um, I did get some feedback from f some folks and uh, I'll just read you one comment to kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about when I, you, know, you have this outsider input. So I had this video, I titled it, Why So Many People Go to Quartzsite. And I talked a lot about like that sense of community and people going back to see uh, tradition, you have like a tradition where they go back every winter and see people they haven't seen all year and um, all, all that kind of stuff. And, but this guy had a different answer. He says, no, the answer to your question, your title is simple. It's monkey see, monkey do. Go sit out in the desert with nothing to do and pretend you're having fun and convince as many as you can to join you. Just maybe there, there might get to be some life around that soulless town. And then he, he ends it, you know, like, this is the final closing. There, 
I spoke the truth, so I'm sure this comment will be taken down. And I didn't take, take it down. I actually pinned it so other people could get a laugh out of it. Um, but, you know, I can kind of get that um, if you just, you know, like this person's exposure to quartzite is probably all through YouTube videos. And when you, you know, this is not exclusive to quartzite. You know, this is a common phenomenon where, you know, there's a group of people having fun and enjoying something. And there's an outsider that doesn't get it and it doesn't enjoy that. Of course, they're going to have this like negative outlook on it if they're that type of person. A lot of people, you know, I see people doing all stuff all the time that I don't get, but I'm not going to go out of my way to try to insult them and tell them the so-called truth about what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a very funny thing to me because it's very surface based. And I made a little note here, this thought I had where... Um, the kind of explanation for that with why you're not seeing what everyone's experienced because it's both going on below the surface. Um, when you have an experience or experience something deeper than what is on the surface, that's more than just what's going on in your environment or your surroundings around you. It can happen anywhere. It can be in the barren desert. It can be in the most beautiful, pristine streamside forest. But if you're having that experience of connecting with other people, feeling, feeling a part of a com community, and, you know, actually caring about your fellow person. If you see they're having a hardship, the willingness to just get out of yourself and go up to a complete stranger and say, hey, I see you're struggling. Do you need help? Like, I've seen that happen more in Quartzite in the middle of the desert than anywhere else. Any neighborhood I lived in, uh, any neighborhood situation or apartment complex I lived in, did that it hap I see it happening more out in that environment. So, um, yeah, th I think that's, for me, one of the most special things, and I think for a lot of other people as well. And, you know, there's just fun things to do. You make the best of it. Yeah, you are just kind of camped out in the middle of nowhere, but you can go into town, and um, there's a popular pizza joint, Silly Al's, decent pizza. Uh, in the evenings, sometimes they'll have live music, and people get up and dance, and there's some other places like that. That, the yacht club kind of more bar music dancing type environment for folks that are into that um, all sorts of stuff and uh, one of the things that a lot of folks do uh, I don't use Facebook I don't have an account so I can't give you direct links but there are a, a couple popular Facebook groups uh, you could probably if you have a Facebook account go to the groups and search Quartzsite I think one of them is titled fun things to do in Quartzsite a place for people to connect and share things that are going on, events. Um, sometimes people do things at their actual camp, so unless you know them or camp near them, you wouldn't know about it, but this Facebook group page can really help you find out about those events. So there's always fun stuff going on, people doing things. You can visit the surrounding areas, go to the Colorado River. It's not too far away near the California state line. Um, go down into Yuma if you want, go up to Parker. Uh, there's, you know, there's things to go explore outside of just Quartzsite if you're going to be there for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off there. I don't want to drag on too long with this video, but I did... Um, when I made that video I posted a couple days ago, I did um, consciously have intentions of posting a follow-up video, but I just really want to keep them separate, and it'll be interesting to see how the numbers pan out. Uh, I found that on YouTube, for some reason, negativity gets more views, <laughs> drama gets more views. That's not why I titled the video the way I did. Um, I think I said something, titled it something like, you don't want to go to Quartzsite, don't come here or stay away, and uh, that was really kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing, uh, especially for people that know Quartzsite, um, you know, know that there can be some challenging aspects of it uh, sometimes, but overall, it's really, for me, a pleasant place to be. I enjoy it. I will miss it this year. I'm not going to be spending much time in Quartzsite. I may pass through and spend a night, but for the most part, um, I've got plans to check some other places out. So so all of you that are in Quartzsite, I really uh, hope you enjoy your stay. Um, I'll miss doing my meetup. I did get a lot of comments on the previous video that a lot of you folks actually went to Quartzsite specifically to attend my meetup, and that's just super special. They've been very special uh, gatherings the last few times I've done it. So I'll miss y'all. Maybe I'll do another one again in the following year, but uh, yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of downtime. We've got Hobbs now, and he's, he's challenged 
challenging when there's a lot of other people around. He gets really worked up and uh, it just he freaks out. So uh, with him being a new new part of the, the crew here, I think it'd be best if we just uh, focus on him and keeping him comfortable and stress-free. So appreciate y'all checking the video. I hope it was helpful and kind of balanced out my previous video. I know a lot of you were turned off. I got some personal messages this is like, why are you so negative? I thought you loved Quartzite. I just wanted to kind of share a lot of the specifics about things that are challenging and kind of a negative for a lot of people. So we'll leave it at that. Hope you guys are doing well and in getting through the holiday season in here and enjoying yourself. We'll see you very soon in the next video. Take care. Peace.